It's a pleasure to be here. It's an honor to be here. I'm glad the Canadian Academy of Health Science invited me to share with you maybe a 30 years in uh, experience uh, in translation uh, research. But I want to congratulate uh, Richard Riopel. <laughs> I've never seen an organizer so enthusiastic <laughs> about organizer organizing this uh, symposium, which is very, very interesting. I think something will come out of it. I've entitled my talk, short talk, about 10 minutes, uh, From Fundamental Research to uh, Products. Can we do it? I'll show you what we have done. And with a little bit of humility, luck was part of it. So, where do I press? Big green, okay, good. This is my team. So we had luck, but we had a good team. Uh, when I came back in 1974 from training in infectious disease in Canada, there was no specialty of infectious disease. These are nice souvenirs. In my hospital, there was no research in infectious disease. I was alone, alone with two MRC grants and two graduate students and one technician. But today, we're 250 researchers working in different areas of infectious disease. I realized very rapidly that people were working in silos. This is normal human nature. People protect their turf. But in reality, I think what has made our success has been that we have researchers in our group that are PhDs and MDs, our professors, uh, scientists. Moreover, we have different specialty. We have microbiologists, we have parasitologists, we have uh, people who are experts in resistance. But also we have, because we work a lot in diagnostics, as you will see, we have experts in technology. We have physicists. This is very interesting, physicists. Brilliant people, very interesting. They work, you know, on the moon, and I'll tell you a little bit of the story and the discussion, maybe if it comes up, but it's very, very, very interesting people. Chemists, we have people in plastics. We have industrial. In all my big projects, I have industry. No string attached. They're partners. They work with us to help us. No benefit if it happens that we can use them. They can use our technology. It's perfect, but no string attached. I think that was a major, uh, a major importance. Let me tell you about my dream. I'm a clinician. So I've been working in antibiotic and antibiotic resistance. And I was lucky when I came back in 74, that was the area of development of new antibiotics. So I had the chance to play with new antibiotics and resistance and realize that, you know, for every antibiotic you put in the market, the bugs just become resistant very rapidly. And I told myself, you know, why is it becoming resistant? I was not the only one thinking about that. Well, it's very simple, overuse of antibiotics. You know, very bad practice. Why bad practice? Why are physicians using broad spectrum antibiotics? Because they didn't have the tools to make a proper diagnostics, because even today, most of the microbiology tests are using, uh, well, most of the diagnostic tools are using microbiology from Pasteur. Takes time, takes two days, sometimes takes several weeks to identify micro. So at that time, I said, we walk on the moon in 69. Why can't we accelerate diagnosis? So people from the early 80s have started to work with DNA, but it was very, DNA was very unsuccessful, low sensitivity, very difficult. I knew there were three things important to make a DNA test. First, you have to get the DNA from the sample. And that's not easy, just imagine a stool how to extract the proper the DNA of the microbes and get the right target. The second, so we work hard on this. Second, you really have to have the proper genomic approach to really prepare the, the pros and then 
later on as PCR came along, well, it was discovered, as you know, in 83, but before we could use it, the, you know, it was not before the, the early 90s. So before they, they got the thermo, the thermo stable enzymes. So you need really to have the proper genomic approach. I'm not going to go into that today. And uh, in reality, you need to have the proper amplification. You have to write, find the right technology. And uh, so I dream about using DNA to accelerate the diagnosis. And my dream was one hour, because as a clinician, I know that if you get the result within an hour, because there are other tests that are done in our patient, it will be useful to the patient, especially, and also to the physician. So my research, all my research has been always patient-centered and clinical practice center in a sense that where are the needs, where are the deficiency in clinical practice. So look at, maybe you have not noticed, can we go, yeah, we can go back on this. So this is uh, DNA that we have here uh, within the plate of Pasteur, but look at the, at the face of Louis Pasteur at this figure. If you go back a little bit, see, it is a little sad. If he would be, if he would be living today, I'm convinced he would be very happy. He would do the same thing. Go to DNA. <laughs> so to make a long story short, uh, technology deficiency. We wanted to accelerate the diagnosis. Practically speaking, uh, the first needs I thought was important to have a rapid test, there are many tests, but I chose to, the Ruby streptococci, which cause, which a woman, a pregnant woman, any woman, 30% of women have in their vagina, can cause serious meningitis when the woman is pregnant at delivery, these microbes go up the, the nose uh, of the child, they're colonized, and sometimes uh, they have meningitis, can't die, become deaf, can be blind. So that was the first test we developed. And we're very proud because in uh, uh, in 2000 we've published the first rapid test could identify a microbe in less than one hour. In fact, it was 30 to 45 minutes. And I have to tell you that before that I had started a company called Infectio Diagnostic Incorporated. So my lab has always been doing research, I've concentrated on research, get the right president, the right people, always stay chairman the board of these to, to keep them in line because that's the problem with companies. You have to keep the focus and you have to continue with your dream. And so two years later, IDI uh, put this uh, this test that was published in New England Journal of Medicine uh, on the market and was approved. It was the first real-time PCR assay ever approved by FDA. As a matter of fact, we've developed five others, six others, but the five others were the first ever approved by uh, FDA. So, uh, and I want you to read uh, this uh, rapidly. What we are here, this new strep IDI made by Infectio Dines of Quebec can provide results in one hour. Uh, the IDI strep B is the first non-culture test that meets the performance criteria of CDC, got at least 85, we had nine, 96%. Percent and sensitive compared to culture meta because of this can be as a instead of standard culture. So really, that was my dream. We're not replacing microbiology, but for this test and several others, that's what we have done. And here are the tests that we've put in market. And remember, all my tests, all the tests we've de developed together were based on clinical needs, the socioeconomic impact, especially the social, the, for the health of the patient is very important. Strep B, we talk about MRSA, medicine and resistance staph, uh, aureus, a very important uh, hospital acquired infection, VRE the same. And then I, uh, we sold the company to Beckton Dickinson. The reason we sold, very simple, we couldn't penetrate the market, and that's very important. We had 12 salesmen, and they had 5,000. So uh, it was a very quick decision when they, they came, sorry, when they came to us, 
And the other tests like staph in blood culture, C. difficile, which is very important, 30,000 deaths in the States last year. Uh, in Canada, about 3,000 BD Max and T Rex that we've developed later on uh, with them. And we won, we're very proud, the Medical Excellence Award, Device Excellence Award for IDI MRC in 2006. And we're also very proud by, because Becton Dickinson bought us but implanted themselves in Quebec City. They've built in uh, 2008, a manufacturing center for our tests that are sold throughout the world in 50 countries. And finally, BD Research Center opened 2008. They wanted to be more independent, and so we teach them. And the beauty is this relation between our infectious disease research center and industry. How we kept after they saw we work for them developing other tests until they, they've got this BD center. So that's the objective. So our students in our, in our, in our research center, we have 65, 70 students, you know, MSc, PhD, a lot of postdocs. So, uh, and I forgot to, to say that in fact, uh, the investment was incredible, you know, 800 million uh, investment, 350 highly qualified job. And now I just founded another company a few years ago and you're going to do the same, but at point of care near the patient, I'm not going to go into the technology, but uh, it's going extremely well. Manufacturing, we're manufacturing this, uh, this team puck machine, and uh, we have a device. So that does everything, you know, and that's the reader. And it's very small. I've got it in my pocket. It can show you. It's the, I call it the Nespresso genomics. Instead of having <laughs> grains of coffee, we have grains of DNA. And it works, I'm gonna tell you. It works and better than even the other tests we've, we, we've developed in the past. Condition of success, I won't go through them. I'll just list them. So food for thoughts, push your dreams. Have a shared vision. People who work with you have to share their vision. You have to have disruptive science but that disrupts the practice of medicine. We could talk about that. Strong patterns, strong constant leadership, passionate thing, push, push R&D to the limit. Keep, push R&D to the limit because don't start your company until you have enough stuff, uh, IP, not only IP, a product or something. Uh, keep focus, entrepreneurship, take risks, you know, we could talk about that. <laughs> Patience and patient, investor that's key choose your investors not, not easy and a visionary board of director that believes in your vision and here are the different companies that were created by researcher in my group the impact of our uh, of our research more than 2000 jobs and 2 billion investment in Quebec city i told you about bd chinpa jail I'll, I'll tell you i had to close the company but now, after five years, there's a company who came because we kept the IP at the university. Uh, after five years, now we have an associate. We did phase one and phase two. It's the invisible condom. We could talk about that. It's a gel to protect women against STD and HIV. And finally, Folio, a new company. And a farm, uh, big, one of the biggest uh, uh, company uh, really uh, in, uh, in North America. Uh, a CRO, clinical research organization, who worked with me uh, as a young researcher. Bernard Brother uh, brought GSK here, initially Biochem Pharma, Shire, and then ID Biomedical, and finally GSK, GSK bought ID Biomedical. It moves, but it stays. And the reason why they came here, it's because we had one of the largest uh, infectious disease center in North America, so we could really support them. And finally, we can say that the Cree is a bastion of transfer technology. And finally, uh, it's done in a beautiful city of Quebec. Innovation, economic prosperity, skilled labor, quality of life, 6,000 researchers, 400 laboratories, more than 100 million RD. And what people don't know, Quebec has the greatest concentration of researchers and research centers in Canada, population-wise. It's number two in North America 
as for university students by percentage of just behind Boston. Number four, number of postgraduate students percent of North America behind Boston, St. Louis, and Baltimore. So we have an environment uh, which has been created and which has been very profitable for patients. We're saving lives every day. Thousands of lives have been saved because of our technology. And uh, uh, I'm very honored to be here. Thank you very much.